Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Do you need a domain model? Why can't you just have simple business logic and data access in a single procedure to handle a single request? Well, I agree. Having a simple transaction script can work in a lot of situations. However, there's a complexity threshold you'll reach where a transaction script is not ideal and having a domain model actually simplifies things. Let me illustrate. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So the example that I'm going to be illustrating through this video and in code is the idea of a shipment. So you're shipping, let's say, food delivery. You're picking uh, food up at a restaurant and then delivering it to somebody at their apartment or house. So we have a shipment and we have those two stops. Again, the pickup, let's say it's the restaurant and the delivery is again, somebody's apartment or house. So the key part is our state transitions for a stop. It goes through the kind of these three states. A stop is gonna be in transit when we're on our way to that stop. So when we're on our way to our restaurant, we're in transit. Then when we get there to pick up the food, we're gonna be in an arrive state. And then when we leave to go to the person's home or wherever we're delivering that food to, then that stop becomes departed. So that's kind of the transition. So what this looks like is we have our shipment, we have our two stops. The first one and second one are both gonna be in transit. Then we're gonna arrive at the restaurant, for example. Then we're gonna depart the restaurant. Then we're gonna arrive at the delivery. And then we're gonna depart for the delivery. So that's our state transition for our shipment. So I mentioned a transaction script at the beginning, and what I'm referring to here is this from Martin Fowler in the Patterns of Enterprise Application Architecture, and it is to organize business logic by procedure where each procedure handles a single request from presentation. I wanna say thank you to all the developer level members of my YouTube channel and Patreon. I really do appreciate the support. They'll get access to all the source code and a private Discord server where you can interact with other members. If you're interested in joining, check out the links in the description. What this looks like in code in my actual example is I have a request that I'm calling arrive and I have a handler for that request. Now, if you're creating a web app and maybe you had this same type of logic in your controller, it's the same concept here. I'm just using Medi Mediator to illustrate it because a lot of people are familiar with it. So we have this request for arrive and we have our data access using entity framework, our ORM. Again, this could be something like active record, anything where we're actually having our data access here as well. So we're getting out our stop that we're trying to do our arrive for. And we just have some basic logic here saying, if we're not in transit, then you can't do an arrive because that's kind of the first transition. And then if we're passing by that, then we're actually gonna set our state. We're gonna change and update our database. So we're setting the status and we're setting our arrive date time. And then we're just saving back to the database. If you're using the repository pattern, the end result is still the same. Yes, you'd be extracting the data access, but the, log the business logic you have here in changing the state and then sending that state back to your repository to save is still the same. So that's a very simple example of a transaction script that has very little business logic and is making very simple state changes. But what happens if it gets a little bit more complex? So what I've done is I've added more business logic that states you can't do an arrive if there are any previous stops that haven't been departed. Meaning we can't arrive at the person's home where, where we're delivering food if we haven't even arrived at the restaurant yet. So what we change here is instead of just getting the single stop that we're making the state transition for, now we have to get all the stops and then we're checking the same to see that it's not in transit because we've already arrived. But now we're getting all the previous stops and checking to see if any of them have not been departed so that we can throw here. If all that succeeds, then we're doing the same thing. We're just making our state transitions here and then saving that back to the database. So I'm gonna add one more concern here, which is now we're gonna be using an event-driven architecture because we have our mobile app that the users are using to place their orders and we wanna let them know when we've actually arrived at the restaurant, for example. So now we're using an event-driven architecture and I have a message broker. So I have this iBus abstraction and now when we actually do our arrive, when we save those changes, I wanna publish an arrived event here um, that again, our consumers, maybe it's some text messaging processing or a push notification to our mobile app so that our customer knows when our food is actually on the way to them. So what we built is a transaction script where we have, maybe if it's our front end with a controller, it's passing that off to our handler. Our handler is interacting with the database, even if it was behind a repository or an ORM. 
And then we're making those state changes, business logic, various concerns, and they're all held within that actual handler. Now, while my first example was really simple, it just had the request, got the data, did a single if statement check for some business logic, and then saved the data of the state transition. It was pretty simple. But then we started adding more logic. Then we started adding more concerns about publishing that event. And in the real world, this keeps kind of continuously growing where you're just adding more logic, more concerns into a single transaction script. And it becomes really hard to manage. So there's a couple ways you could realize you've kind of overdone a transaction script. The first and most obvious is testing. If you have a lot of complexity and a lot of concerns, it's gonna be very difficult to test. The second one is when you start having requirements where a transaction script needs to leverage another transaction script. And because transaction scripts, or handlers in my case, are kind of a single unit where an actual transactional boundary occurs, this is very difficult because you wanna have one transaction script call another one, but it be one atomic operation, which it usually can't. So to illustrate this, this is my pickup command. So this is a separate transaction script that I have that does the pickup when we're at the restaurant to actually pick up the food. And one of the pieces of logic I have here is that the status of the stop must be in transit, meaning we must have had to have done the arrive prior to being able to do this pickup. I've done this shipment example in other videos and I always get the comment, but in the real world, you wouldn't have to do the arrive. If the driver, the person actually picking up the food didn't do it and then did the actual pickup, you would just automatically do the arrive for them. But then how do we do that with transaction scripts? How do I call the arrive um, handler transaction script from our pickup? This is when a domain model becomes useful. To encapsulate your data of what those stops are and the actual behaviors of doing things like the arrive, the pickups, and the delivery. And having that business logic and state transitions within that domain model for example, I'm using an aggregate. So what that looks like is we have our different controllers invoking different mediator handlers, but our handlers rather, instead of them having the business logic and state transitions, rather they're gonna be uh, invoking something on our aggregate that's actually gonna do that. So they're just kind of facilitating getting our aggregate and saving our aggregate. So what that looks like is I've created an aggregate route that has our stop data, but as well has all the behavior methods of arrive, pickup, and delivery. And I'll go through these in a second. But first, let's jump back over to our pickup. So instead of this being a transaction script now, what I've done is I've changed this so that it's using a repository that's getting back that aggregate route, that shipment aggregate route. Now I've done videos on repositories before, and that's where I prefer using them, is not to return data models, but to actually return and save aggregate routes specifically. Not just data, but aggregate routes. And again, your aggregate route and your aggregate are what encapsulate data and behavior. So we're just gonna get our aggregate route and then we're gonna call pickup on it. So now let's jump through here and I'll show you what this is actually doing. So this has all that logic that we previously had in our transaction script. And here was some of the logic that we had that said, if the status isn't arrived, then we can't do the pickup. But we said maybe our new requirement, because the real world is that you actually should be able to, but how are we gonna call that arrived transaction script? Well, because this isn't a transaction script, we don't have that limitation. Instead of throwing an exception, rather what I can do is I can just do the arrive. So here for our arrive, we have to do our stop ID and we can just use our departed time as the same time so now we're just gonna do the arrive if they haven't done the arrive for the pickup. We don't have that issue of having things in separate transaction scripts that are in separate transactional boundaries. Now we're making all our state transitions and all the behaviors exposing them in our aggregate route. It's the one managing all that logic, all the state transitions, so that our, what were our transaction scripts are really just delegating that responsibility to make those trans, uh, state transitions into our aggregate route. So one of the benefits of moving all this logic in terms of our state transitions and our business logic into an aggregate route is that we can write tests that only have or focus on those concerns. So as an example of what we just changed is that we can do a pickup without arriving. So I have my aggregate route that I've defined here with our initial stop uh, states set up and I'm just calling pickup. And then from there, what I can do is I can confirm that's actually getting called correctly because as I showed earlier with events is our aggregate route is actually raising these events. It's just basically adding an event 
um, to a collection. And I can get that out by calling get uncommitted events. This is just what I have exposing to return those events. What this is really used for is our repository, after it saves our state, it's actually gonna be publishing these events using our bus. But we can leverage this to see, okay, when I call pickup, it's gonna do the arrive for us because we haven't. So I can confirm that the arrive happened and the pickup happened. And as you can see, all my other tests are very simplistic. They're not very complicated. Is we can, uh, can do arrive if a stop doesn't exist. Every basically already arrived, every piece of logic that I have, my tests are incredibly simplistic to confirm what we think should happen um, is happening and what we don't think should happen doesn't happen. So should you always use a domain model? No, absolutely not. Should you always use transaction scripts? No, absolutely not. You got to find the balance of even if you start with a transaction script because things are very crud in nature. The moment you start seeing multiple concerns and varying degrees of business logic and things become difficult to test, you know at that point, okay, we've gone too far with this. And again, another way of kind of illustrating this is when you have logic that needs to be shared. If you, the moment you feel like I need a transaction script to call another transaction script because there's logic within it or how it does the state changes and I need one to call the other, that's kind of a signal that you've gone too far with transaction scripts and you probably want to encapsulate those behaviors and that those data to state transitions within an aggregate. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.